There's a lot of love on this stage, right? We've all been saying really lovely things to each other, but that's just for you. We're really horrible to each other normally. We've been calling him Baz on set yeah. forever. When he's naughty, we call him Baz Cracker. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with these people. Logophile. Oh! oh. Got a karaoke oh. sound. And I was like, you have picked the two people least likely to do karaoke. And action. Welcome, panel. Well, have a seat. Have a seat. How excited is everybody? Kaz Brecker was actually going to be Baz Brecker. No. I way. know. I know. What? We've been calling him Baz on set forever. Yeah. When he's naughty, we call him Baz Cracker. <laughs> Whenever I drop something and do something uncool. Yeah. <laughs> There, you're like, you could never do anything uncool. Um, no, he, he was supposed to be Baz Brecker, and then um, a series came out, Rainbow Rowell series, Carry On, and there's a main character named Baz, and I was like, there can't be two Bazes. And I feel like Baz Brecker feels much more like showman-like, like, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then uh, Inej, Inej's name came to me sort of instantly. Um, I just knew who she was, and, um, and then when I saw Amita, I was like, oh, yeah. She arrived. Thank you. Yeah. Can I just say, please? I know you're saying your tape was bad, but literally when she came on the screen, I was like, oh, oh, oh no, she looks exactly like an edge. And I was like, please let her be good because you don't know, right? Like some, no, sometimes somebody will be like, that person is beautiful. And then they start talking and you're like, oh, please be quiet. <laughs> um, but <laughs> instead I started crying like halfway through that tape. I was like, it's her, it's her. And then we were just like, please let her want to do the show. Like it was yes. so, yeah, it was really intense. Lee, I love it. You're like their biggest champion. I, I just love how excited, you can hear it in her voice, right? Just how exciting this is. Uh, Freddie, uh, similar with the same question here. Uh, were you a big fan of the books ahead of time? Did you know uh, about them? I had heard of the Grisha verse before, yeah. but um, as I got the same sort of audition email through, um, as Amita did, but it came with this very useful website called Grisha Wiki. Um, yes. And I lost two to three working days on that website. <laughs> um, just I went, I went down the rabbit holes and I, I went and bought the books and I started reading Six of Crows and I got to the first sentence actually of the second chapter, which says Kaz Brecker didn't need a reason. And I thought, powerful. And I thought, I am going to stop there. Because if I don't get this part, I'll be so, so upset because everything was in that one sentence. And uh, yeah, so I had to stop myself until I found out I got the part. We were kind of all cast together, but these two uh, were cast before. And so I also had to fit into a trio. Even if I could play Jesper, I have to be the right Jesper for this Kaz and this Inej. And so I definitely felt that pressure. And then when we were announced, we hadn't started shooting yet. But all of you had ideas. <laughs> oh. And they, they, yes, yeah. they do. Yeah. In a good way. In, in, in a great way. But uh, uh, the, the expectation that you might have uh, um, and the, the, you know, the, the kind of, the, uh, the wait to find out what it's going to be. Like, we, we have that too. Like, because we're excited to see what it's going to be. And we don't really know. We, you know, I always say, you know, we were making something that we thought was cool. Yeah. We're really glad you agree. <laughs> but that's never for certain. Um, and so now I think I'm in a place where I can let myself just live it a bit. Um, but at the beginning, it was bloody terrifying. You have these Bibles that you can go back to. Um, and I think that the tools that we have to play with in sort of creating these characters, the descriptions of them, but the, the words that they, they, they speak. And I love words. I'm sure a lot of you do, too. Um, <laughs> That makes me a logophile, <laughs> a lover of words, which I learned quite recently, probably from Freddie. He um, Googled that. I love the way you say that, and it sounds filthy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, let me drop some Latin on you. <laughs> logophile. Oh! oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, and, um, but, but I, I wasn't a stranger to the sort of the pressure of, particularly with the Narnia stories. They were, I, I love those books from when I was eight years old. I still have my copy. And um, so to be casting something like that, I think I put quite a lot of pressure on myself, uh, you know, and I hadn't really done, I'd done w one, maybe two films by that point. Didn't, was quite green, didn't know what I was doing really. So um, 
But by the time it came around to this, I, I, I've been doing this a little while, and I felt like this character had a sort of pieces from some of the other characters that I played, or things that I felt confident I knew how to portray, but then I, have, I, I actually called Lee on the day that we were filming the scene um, in the tent where I, um, where I test Alina, um, sort of the first proper scene that you see Kirigan in. And, and I said, I have been in these worlds. I've played, I've played living, real people yeah. who were with me on, on set. And I've done these very famous books. I've done you know, adaptations from Dorian Gray to Narnia. Yeah. But I've never felt like I was in a story for a whole day. And when I was filming that in the tent, the tent looked like I imagined it. Alina looked like I imagined her. The co costume felt how I imagined it would, it would feel. And, I, and, I, and I, I called you and I said, I feel like I'm in a story. I feel like I'm on a, on a page. All day I felt that way. And, and, I, and that's when I thought we were sort of onto something a bit special with it. Look, when you're writing a book, your only goal is, are there writers, writers in the room? Writers? Some of my people. Yeah. Love that. When you're writing a book, your only goal is to finish the book, right? <laughs> So sometimes you can't help it. Your mind will wander and you will begin to dream of, your ambition gets the best of you and you dream of some di someday having an adaptation. But all there really is is you and the work for a very long time. And then it goes out in the world and it finds readers and, and you hope that they see the things that you've imagined. And sometimes you're lucky enough to get fan art or cosplay and you get to see people bring the words to life in that way. And then to actually have this happen, like there was a part of me that did not actually believe this was happening. Like I was like, when they sent me the first dailies, I was like, oh. You were still saying that as it was about to air. Yes. <laughs> it, yes like, it was already I, in the can. I, yeah. I do what is called disaster origami. Like you can give me anything and I will be like, look, I made it bad. Boom. Yeah. I made oh. it scary and like that's that's how my life is waiting for things to go wrong. So I was like, they're just they're not gonna air it. They're not gonna. I don't know. They they say it's gonna air, but who can say? So it sounds until, like the basis of another book. I mean, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, for me, being on set, getting to meet them for the first time, they can all tell you how I cried. I cry at everything. I absolutely wept, and then also getting to actually be in the show just briefly. And yes. to do that particular scene was, I was just supposed to be in a scene where I like opened the door for Alina, and instead I got to be in this huge scene that I remember writing. I remember sitting at my dining room table wow. and writing this, this moment and trying to figure out the choreography of it and trying to figure out the Darkling's lines in this moment. And, and to suddenly be there like, was, um, it was the most beautiful thing. Like, it was just the most beautiful experience, and so few people get to do it. And the reason I got to do it was honestly because of all of you guys. So thank you for that. And thank you to all of you. I realize playing such a cool character how uncool I am in real life. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I try to be cool on multiple. Ben's like cracking up over here. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Amita, should we recreate the moment from the boat? What you shouted. <laughs> Every time. Oh, yeah. All right. Come on. Recre right. Come on. Here so, we go. Okay, I'm going to set, right set the scene. We're doing a recreation right here. So, so here we are, episode eight. Episode Climax. eight. Uh, has everyone seen the show? <laughs> so you may remember there's a moment <laughs> where Inej throws a certain weapon, <laughs> of which she has many, uh, into the Darkling's heart area. Now, this was not a real knife. Um, so uh, we, we mime this bit, and they would CGI the knife in later, and then I wore a plate where there was a knife in it, which I would pull out of myself and do some brilliant acting. Um, He's so good. Questionable. And then um, some questionable uh, acting. And, uh, but every single time, for some unknown reason, nobody asked her to do this, every single time that Amita threw this particular weapon this would come out of her mouth. And action. Knife! <laughs> Hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and went the on for thing days. In the whole world. Can we Every get... single time she did it. Went... Knife! <laughs> <laughs> you, so like, sometimes you when we greet butt. each other, sometimes when we greet each other, we just go, Knife! knife. <laughs> also, what I will say is, 
But there's a lot of love on this stage, right? We've all been saying really lovely things to each other, but that's just for you. We're really horrible to each other normally. I, I mean, we assume so. Like, with there's, there's, uh, I, I'm, I'm done with these people. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, please. So season, season two is going to be work, is what you're saying. Uh, no, no, this is all in jest. But um, we, we the, especially coming into season two, of which I am not allowed to say anything other than in Netflix we trust. Um, uh, we, we came in and we just got to pick up where we left off. And we had all of these memories together and we had a huge level of excitement because now people know what it is and we know what it is better. We're not just guessing. We're, we can watch season one and go, oh, okay, that's what we're aiming for. But it also meant that we mucked around a lot more. Um, I, I ended up kind of shouting acting before every scene, or at least I did, I, I don't know. Seems to be a lot of shouting, just, just random of shouting. things. Yeah. Lot of shouting. <laughs> it's nice. I'm not saying anything else. You have to wait for the blooper reel. Lee, you I were gonna chime in there? I will say that when I visited set, uh, and this was after they had been on set in a foreign country for six months, you'd be sitting and you would hear them in the green room, which was a tent, you know, and, there's a, and they would be singing together. Like they were, it was like, they were at summer camp and they would all, and they're very good singers too, but they would all just be singing. And I was like, what is happening here? Like, it was pretty magical. One big kumbaya, yeah? yeah. If I remember correctly, it was Zero to Hero from Hercules. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent it was. It choice. Was. Yeah, Kit, oh, no. well now. No, you don't want that. What have you done? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Come on, Kit. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Young Huck was mortal <laughs> now. <laughs> That's actually not the right song, but. <laughs> That's great. Zero the hero. That's there enough. you go. There you go. You got a little bit of it. Hang on, Lee's the picked them all for she's us. She's picked already. them. What are you picking, Lee? This is great. So this is canon now because Lee's yeah, just yeah, it's official. <laughs> Wait, canon. so uh, so Anita's karaoke song, uh, so Inej's karaoke song is. Oh, I, I didn't say she asked me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she asked me last night and she said, "Darkling and Kaz, what were their karaoke, karaoke oh. songs?" And I was like, "You have picked the two people least likely to do karaoke. <laughs> you, I gave, I will survive." <laughs> yeah. Because at first you were afraid, you were petrified, but. <laughs> and for Cass. <laughs> I chose Dancing Queen by ABBA. Yeah! <laughs> How do you feel about that, Fred? How well, that's me in my trailer every morning, getting ready. Every morning. myself up, Dancing Queen. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> 